Do you have a customer that wants to return something or get a refund and you're wondering, how do you enter that into QuickBooks? Then you're in the right place. If we've never met before, hi, I'm Candice Camper. I love to help business owners and bookkeepers create confidence and simplicity with QuickBooks. And that's exactly what we do on this channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. So let me show you, it depends on a few things, how you enter this. Now, if you are looking for the desktop version, you want to go up above or down below and find the desktop version. This is for QuickBooks Online users specifically. So let's jump in to QuickBooks Online. So when you're in here, one of the things you're going to want to do first is you're actually going to want to go look up that customer if you don't already know the details about them, because depending on how you want to enter the refund is going to depend on how you did the initial sale, so to speak. Now, this example is going to be if you are coming in here and you're creating an invoice and receiving a payment, we're going to go in and enter in a refund. But first, as I said, you're going to want to do a little bit of due diligence and research if you haven't already. So you're going to go into that customer and you're going to find the customer who you're either doing a refund for or a return. You're going to go ahead and click on them and you're going to look up the initial invoice. So let's just use Jeff here as an example that he wants to do a return for his $81. So we're going to go ahead and click on this. We're going to look and see exactly what happened here. So landscaping and maybe you did services and you decided that you're no longer he, you know, something was overcharged or he didn't actually get the service. Maybe he's not happy with it. It just depends on the scenario. But he had three hours at 25. Now, maybe you're only crediting them one hour. Maybe you're doing all three. So you're going to go up here. Now, you have two choices. There's actually two ways with which you could do this. One is to do an actual refund receipt. This is what you're going to do if Jeff has paid you and you're giving him money back. In this example, we're actually going to give him a credit memo. That means we're going to put money back on his account because he never paid for this invoice. And he will then be able to have that in the future to apply or at least apply against this. Maybe you're never going to do any work with him again. So you're going to go down. You're going to choose Jeff. I typically recommend doing credit memos in your current time frame because if you've already done sales tax or any of those things, if you try to go back and do prior cleanup or old work, you want to make sure that this is current. Okay. If you're needing help with cleanup, I actually have a cleaning up workshop. I'll link it up above or down below if you're needing help with that specifically. So then you're going to come in here and you're going to look up the weekly gardening that we had. So weekly gardening, it was three. So we'll go ahead and put in the dollar amount, which is going to be 25, 75. Now the initial one was taxable. So we want to make sure that we're actually marking that as taxable. If you don't know what the customer is or you didn't have all the data, what you could do is right click and duplicate this. If you've never done that, duplicate tab, it's always a way to have more than one tab available at the same time. And then you can go back in. We'll click close on this one. We'll go back in and open it. So that's a nice thing about having more than one if you don't know it off the top of the head what you're looking at. So you can go in here and he had California 8% sales tax. So we'll go down here, pick 8% sales tax. And then you could put a little memo in here that says the original invoice number, right? And the details. So the invoice number was 1022. It's up here on the top and it was on 518. So invoice number 1022 on 518. Asked, you just put in the information, asked for refund, whatever it was, wasn't happy. You just want to have details so that you know what happened, okay? So then you're going to come down here and you don't, you can choose to either send it to them or you can click this drop down and just click save and close and then it never sends it to them. Okay. So the thing that QuickBooks online does automatically that desktop doesn't do is it will actually apply it for you directly. So you'll notice this is the original invoice. It no longer has a balance and he, it shows that it's now been paid and it shows against the credit memo, right? So you can actually just click on the invoice and it will show paid. And if you want to look at the payments, as always, you can click on payments and it'll walk you through that that is the credit memo. So that's how you do it. If your customer had an invoice, maybe they only want a partial credit, then you would come in here and you'd only do a partial credit. You can do this any way you want. You can customize this to be only one if that's what you need it to be. If it's not for this, it's like a customer satisfaction adjustment, any of those things you can, you can go in here and make and do whatever you need. So now let's go in and say, okay, that's how we do a customer credit. How are we going to do a customer refund? So let's go in here and look for a customer. So here is one where Kate came in and purchased something from us, right? 
and maybe she wants a return, she decided to return her design. It could be a full refund or it could be a partial refund. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this again just so that we can have the same screen open while we're looking at it. And now we're gonna go in and we're gonna actually refund in QuickBooks the money to Kate. So you're gonna come down here to new. You're gonna come down here to refund receipt. And you're gonna choose your customer. So we're gonna go find Kate. And then you're gonna choose your date that you're actually refunding her on and the payment method with which you're doing. If you're gonna do a Visa card, you can choose Visa. Now, if you have your merchant set up, you can choose to do it through the merchant. If you don't, you can choose to do the refund from one of two things, either your undeposited funds or your bank account. So if you have a merchant, if you are doing a Visa, it might come from your undeposited funds, which is your overall amount of money that you have available that's gonna be coming to you in a deposit. So I'm gonna give you that example. If not, you could do check and maybe it comes out of the bank account directly and then the check number. Okay, so you decide what you need. I wanna give you an example from merchants just because more and more people are using merchants. So we're gonna take it from undeposit funds. Undeposit funds is that bank bag. If that's not something you're familiar with, you might wanna check out um, Confidence with QuickBooks where I go through more of like the how to's for this. Okay, so we're gonna come in here and we are gonna go ahead and enter in our design work, okay? Now, the original sales receipt is she paid us three at 75 rate, so maybe three hours or three times for 75 rate for 225. Let's say that we're gonna give her back one of those, so $75. And then here, it could be, Kate uh, didn't end up using entire, three hours or whatever it is. Maybe she prepaid for it. Okay. So we're giving her back the 75. You can choose, always look at your previous and see, was it taxable or not? If the answer is no, go back over here. You can see I'm just going back and forth, scrolling down. Now I'm going to click here. You can save and send it or save and close. That depends if you want to send it to the customer or not. I'm going to go ahead and click save and close. I want to show you in a minute what happens to this undeposited funds. And that's it. It says it's been refunded and you click OK. And you'll notice the refund is right here and it will track. Now, if you're wondering like what happened to the undeposit funds when I go to actually make a deposit, when you click on this, you'll notice that the 75 is sitting here as a negative. So let's just say that we were gonna deposit all of these at one time. You'll notice we click the first two, it's 2062. And when I click the last one, the 75, it reduces it. So that's the best way if it's a merchant and you're gonna be paying it all at one time that you can handle it, okay? Let me know below, does that make sense? Have you been wondering, how do you handle refunds, especially if it's involved with a merchant provider? Like maybe you're using Stripe or even PayPal. Even if it's PayPal, I typically recommend, then this would be going to a PayPal bank account. That is also something I teach inside Commons QuickBooks, okay? So then we'd say, yes, do you wanna save it? We'd save it. Then that deposit is recorded into our bank account. We've refunded our customer and everything has been processed properly. So I gave you two different examples. One was, what do you do if your customer is just getting a return or credit on their account? And the second is, how do you handle an actual refund for that specific customer, whether it's from a merchant or directly from bank account, or if you wanted, you could also choose from cash. Let me know down below, what was the biggest aha takeaway? And did you get all of your questions answered? If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe because that way you'll see our future videos and you can always turn on your notification to get notified. And if this video helps you, please give us a thumbs up. I can't wait to see you inside our next step and trick. If you are needing help with either cleaning up your QuickBooks, I will link that workshop above. Or if you're also needing help with like actually customizing your QuickBooks for your specific business, I'd recommend checking out Confidence with QuickBooks. Thank you for being here. I can't wait to see you inside our next tip and trick. Bye.